is tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTut and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. This time around we're taking a look at how to create this contoured text displacement effect, uh, text portrait kind of thing. Um, you can see here I did this on my design a day challenge a few days ago. Uh, this was days 195 and 196 and essentially uh, I do a design a day and uh, challenge myself to make it a whole year. If you want to see more of that sort of thing you can follow me on social media, Instagram and Facebook. I put these on and link to those are in the description but enough of that um, let's talk about how this is done and what the effect is essentially in any point where the image is dark then it is, is going to distort some text and any point where the image is light it's going to not distort the text and what that does is it creates this really cool effect where the lines of text seem to be disappearing into the image so Terry Pratchett here for example um, these words sort of distort and twist into their mouths into um, the raven on his head and with Stephen King here it's the furrows of his brow and the darkness of his mouth and things like that as well this is based on a tutorial uh, by Spoon Graphics um, but it's a bit hard to follow in text so I'm going to do a video of that but there are some cool um, tutorials on this site so go check them out blog.spoongraphics.co.uk without any further ado let's just jump right in you're going to want to open up photoshop and i'm going to start here with a picture of um robert jordan the author and i'm just going to drag that so it creates a um, canvas at the correct size you're then going to want to hit Control j first of all to duplicate that background layer into something we can work with and we're going to want to make it black and white. So to do that, we can just hit uh, filter down here and choose black and white. And we want to make sure there's a good amount of contrast. We can crunch down the reds a little bit, bring down these um, yellows as well to create a little bit of contrast in this site here. Now, this isn't the highest quality image, so it's going to be a little bit clunky, but that's OK. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now, to create the displacement map, what you're going to need to do is add a little bit of blur to this image. And that's just to soften up some of the edges. Otherwise, it can look a bit harsh. So to that one, it's just going to need a filter and blur. And then Gaussian blur. Just put a few pixels on that, whether that's sort of about three pixels for something this size. That's entirely dependent on, obviously, the size of your canvas. Mine's only about 1280 pixels wide. OK, so we're now going to need to save this as just anything, call it displace.psd, okay? Um, now this is gonna be the map upon which we displace our text, okay? Now, the first thing, very important, um, is to undo that blur layer, just for now, okay? Because that's all we need for, that's all we needed it for was for the displacement map. So let's save this again as whatever you wanna call it, final, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, just so you know, you're now working with a separate file and that displace file is safely tucked away in your folder here, okay? Now let's draw a text box, roughly the size of your canvas, and choose your piece of text. Now I've chosen uh, a great chapter from um, the Wheel of Time's first book um, here. So I'm just gonna copy all of this text. Now this text can be whatever you want. Uh, I've chosen a sample from the Eye of the World, and I'm just gonna paste this into our box, okay? Now this is gonna obviously display differently depending on what text you put in there. It may or may not fill your screen, but what we want to do is basically make it so this text closely fits our entire screen. Now, at the moment, there's paragraph breaks, so we're going to want to get rid of those. So I'm just going to go through and delete them so that we don't have any justification issues or gaps. And you're going to want to set your paragraph of text. You want to set it to be uh, justified with, under your paragraph menu here, which is the fully justified option. Uh, and that's so that it covers from edge to edge your page. So you can see here that I'm running a little bit low on words. So what I'm going to do is just select all my text again and copy it and then just paste it again so that it fills up my screen. OK, now, obviously, if you wanted to have a full passage in there, you could do that. But for the sake of examples, this works totally fine. What I'm going to do, however, is select all this text again. Um, excuse me, select all this text again. And I'm just going to make it just a little bit smaller. Maybe like so. Decrease the gap between things like so. And then I'm going to need, again, just a little bit more. So I can just put that down. Uh, copy that again and paste it to fill the rest of the screen. OK, great. So we now have a text box that fills our screen, which is exactly what we need. This next step is very important, so make sure you remember it. Uh, make sure your text is above the black and white layer, first of all, and then control click your text layer to select all of those outlines. Um, 
excuse me, no, sorry, that's the next step. Uh, first of all, uh, hit control D to deselect that. First of all, we want to displace this text according to our displacement map. Okay, so to do that, that's really easy. You can just go up to uh, filter, distort, and then displace. Now, it'll ask you if you want to rasterize this text, and you do, otherwise you won't be able to do it. Now, the horizontal and vertical scale is basically how much you want to actually distort it. Um, this is, again, going to depend entirely on your canvas size. For mine, of a canvas size is about 1280 by whatever it is, um, five seems to work okay. If for you, it may be different. And you can see it's going to now ask me to choose our displacement map that we made earlier. And that's going to splish all that text around um, according to that displacement map. OK, now you control click that layer and make sure to hide it. Now, this is important because what we're essentially going to do is we're going to copy all of the content of all of our layers. OK, and if we don't hide this layer, all it's going to do is just copy the white. Yes, it will be displaced, but it won't have any of the um, uh, shading of the below pictures, for example. If I copied this entire picture merged, it would take our displaced text with all of the black and white. If I copied this layer merged, it would just be white. OK, so we need to make sure control click that layer and then hide it from there. Go to edit, copy merged. OK, hit control D to dis deselect that and then hit edit, paste special, paste in place. It's going to look like nothing's happened. But if we hide our image layer, we can now see the outlines of our author's face. OK, all we need now is to create a background layer, maybe of just pure black. Give us a shape that fills the screen. And push that below our text. And voila, there you have it. Uh, our displacement map text. Now, this one doesn't work as well as the examples, because like I said, the image is quite low quality. And this is the first time I was testing that out. But as you can see, it's quite cool. From a distance, it looks like just perhaps uh, a series of dots or images. But when you zoom in, you realize it's actually a quote. And if you do it properly, you can get um, certain words to be accented like dark friend, you know, um, and that is pretty much all there is to it. Again, it works better the higher quality image you have. So this um, one of Terry Pratchett here works quite well because there's bold, bold color differences. And this one of Stephen King works quite well because of the detail and the high resolution of the image. Unfortunately, Robert Jordan, it seems, wasn't too much of a fan of having his photo taken. So there's only a few photos of him online. But I hope you found that useful. I hope you find this a cool technique because I certainly do. And hopefully I'll see you next time on the next episode of Tip Up. I'll see you then. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.